Okay, so I've just shut the kitten outside of my door because he just got super hype and was just jumping all over me and being mental. So if you start scratching and meowing, <laughs> I'm gonna have to let him in, but he's just woken up and he's gotten hype. So um, hopefully he doesn't disturb my video. Anyway, um, I actually wanted to speak a little bit about how I presented growing up but not really presented to other people but just kind of like how I knew that I wasn't okay like how I knew basically from a very young age that my head was fucked <laughs> like before I even realized what was going on just like the things that I was doing and um yeah stuff like that so I'm going to try my very hardest to be as um informative as I can but there's a lot that I can't remember like a lot of my childhood is just literally like I was asleep like blacked out so I'm gonna do as, this as thoroughly as I can but we'll see how it goes so from a very young age uh, and I'm not really gonna go into why um, I have these issues. I do believe that some of them are hereditary. So even if I'd had like your normal, typical childhood, um, I feel like I definitely would still struggle with certain aspects of my mental health. I just don't know how severely, but perhaps I will kind of cover why in a different video. So I might touch on like relevant points, but that's not really what this is gonna be about. Anyway, uh, for context, from a very young age, I didn't live in a mum and dad household. I lived with my grandma, just me and my grandma. Uh, that was the person that um, I lived with from just before my second birthday, all the way up until I moved out at 18 or 19. I think it was 19, I'm not too sure. <sighs> So let me try my first kind of memories. Well, these might not all be in order. When I was really, really young, I used to do things that I would now consider to be self-harming behaviors without realizing that they were self-harming. Maybe you'd call it more self-sabotaging, but I was doing it for the effect of hurting yourself. Um, but um, I don't know, because for me, self-harm can come in a, a bunch of different, like can present in a load of different ways. Sometimes you're self-harming for relief. Sometimes you're self-harming for a distraction. Sometimes you're self-harming because you feel like you deserve it and you want to hurt. So I feel like there's lots of different levels to self-harming rather than just the action of hurting yourself. So when I was really young, and this sounds really barbaric, I'm not even joking and um, this is, I'm a vegan so this is very um, non-vegan and I'm quite ashamed to admit it but I was a kid, I was really really young. I remember doing things to purposely get upset about them because the pain and the upset that I felt, I've always felt things so so deeply that that was my punishment. One of those things that I used to do I'm gonna sound like a serial killer. <laughs> um, was I used to catch flies in my garden. I used to catch flies in my garden. <clears throat> Sorry, pregnancy heartburn again. Um, and when I caught those flies, I seem to remember ending their lives. <laughs> I'm on about just like a blue ass fly that would be in the garden flying around the cat bowl that was out there and I would literally be sat out there with like a little fly trap and I know I sound completely psychotic but I'm talking about I, I was young at this age I can barely remember it I just have like an odd memory of it and um I would catch these flies and I I don't know what I would do to them maybe I would just like squish them with a rock or something and then I used to cry and cry and cry and bury them and give them some kind of funeral. Um, oh my God, the cat's meowing. Please just pretend that we can't hear it. <laughs> when I was growing up, and probably until the age of about like 11 or 12, I was sort of being raised as a Christian. I'm not a Christian, 
but I was taken to church and I was baptized and I went like every Sunday um, to church with my great grandparents. So when they died, I guess I kind of just stopped going and I, it never aligned with me on my beliefs, so whatever. But um, I used to give them a funeral and I used to, at this point, kind of be like, oh God, literally, oh God, what have I done? Oh God, you know, kind of asking forgiveness. And it was this whole kind of inner turmoil that I had done this horrible thing and I'm a horrible person, but I did it to myself. I did it on purpose because I knew it was gonna make me feel that way. Um, like I say, my brain was too young to process what I was doing or why. I just knew that it gave me those results of feeling punished, like I needed to punish myself. And um, it just gave me that whole, it gave me pain is what it gave me. It was mental pain. And um, so that was one of the things that I did that was really disturbing. The trouble is everything that I did, all of these things that I'm gonna go over, I was very, very secretive about. I was always very sly. Now that I'm a parent myself, I realize that parents know more than you think probably. So maybe there were things that, I don't know, were picked up on or whatever, but I this was something that I did on my own. It wasn't around my grandma. It was when I was left to my own devices. So she never really knew um and if she ever like did then maybe i would have just said oh i found a dead fly i'm burying it you know not what i was doing but i don't think this is something that she ever knew that is one of the things that i used to do um but on that same topic i used to do a lot of things to cause myself upset so i remember sitting in my bedroom i don't know how old i was but still quite young and i had a ruler i had a pink glittery sparkly ruler and I loved this ruler so much. By the way, tell me if I say ruler weird or not, because I've always had the piss taken out of me for how I say the word ruler, but I feel like I just say it normally. Anyway, I had this pink glittery ruler and it had my name on it. And to me, that was such a massive deal because nobody's name was Jacqueline and my name was never on anything. So I don't know where my grandma found it but she bought it for me and I was so pleased with it and I really, really loved it. And I distinctly remember sitting in my bedroom and sitting on my bed and um, my grandma was upstairs too because she was in the bath, but obviously like her door was closed. And I was just sat here bending this ruler, playing with it, but kind of, it's like a devil on your shoulder. It was like, do it, do it, do it. And I guess this is the same problem that I have with my eating issues is part of my brain is kind of going do it do it do it even though I know it's a bad thing and I snapped it I snapped the ruler in half and as soon as I snapped it I started crying because <laughs> I was so upset I was so upset that I'd broken it and I kind of said to my grandma oh my, you know my ruler's broken I snapped accident. I told her it was an accident. She didn't believe me and she was right. She was like, oh, you did that. Like, and it, I would say the exact same thing to my kids now. How did it accidentally snap in half? Um, and she was right. I had snapped it on purpose and I was really, really upset about it. <sighs> my goodness. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm honestly just trying to breathe, <laughs> but it's so difficult. Um, so those are a couple of things that I can remember doing when I was quite young. Uh, I also had a teddy bear. So my mum went on holiday once when I was quite young again. I think she went to Blackpool with her then partner, um, who is my brother and sister's dad. And they both came back from their holiday and they each bought me a teddy, they each bought me a present. Now, I, growing up, always had like a really up and down relationship with my mum and there's lots of reasons behind why that is. And like I say, perhaps I'll talk about that in another video, but um, I have only recently been okay with my mum for the past like three years of my life, maybe like two years, like maybe not even that. I'd say like two or three years of my life that we've had like a mother-daughter relationship. Before that, it was pretty much resentment my whole life. So obviously when you're quite young, that's quite difficult to present. <sighs> so her and her partner both bought me a teddy bear 
and I remember that I had this pink fluffy cat and I wish I knew what happened to that because I don't know I don't have it anymore I had that from him and I had a Winnie the Pooh teddy from my mum and they both gave me the teddies and I you I took the teddy um and I took them both and I gave it back to her and I told her I didn't like it and I did it on purpose because I knew that it would make her feel bad so then I got to feel guilty about it and I'm not even lying I tortured myself about that for so long because I did like it I was just again stirring up these emotions um I used to go and stay around my mum's as well on weekends sometimes or like in the holidays or whatever I used to go and stay around there and sometimes it would be unplanned so me and my grandma would go around there and then she would be like my grandma would be like oh well you can stay if you want and my mum would be like do you want to sleep over and I honestly and even now I'm the same with decision making I really really struggle with it sometimes I would literally be like crying and screaming because I felt guilty I felt guilty on my grandma if she was going home in case she thought I didn't want to be with her but then I felt guilty on my mum <laughs> if I left with my grandma in case she thought I didn't want to be with her and I literally remember like I had times when I was a teenager like I don't know say like a friend would ask me to play out and I would literally be kind of just in my room having a complete meltdown because I'm like do I do I want to go do I not I just like this is my I don't know why I don't know where that comes from but it was this absolute inability to handle and process my emotions it's it was just so much going on in my brain and at such a young age and there were so many things going on in my environment and in my home life as well that it was it was just too much it was too much for me to handle so I did all of these things to try and I don't know manage some of these emotions as you can imagine when I got to a teenager things just got worse because in comes puberty and all of your raging teenage hormones and the anger (laughs) mixed up with all these other things and um Oh wait, Um, I also remember um, tying a skipping rope around my neck in the garden when I was young. Um, Oh, that's the cat. Okay, the cat has a toy that's like hanging on the door outside. So that's what that noise is and I'm not moving it. So if it makes a noise, we're just gonna have to deal with it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I remember tying the skipping rope to the pole that had the washing line on and um and I was tying the other half around my neck and I was just pulling it and pulling it and I was was just thinking about dying like I say I've been I've been quite open about the fact that I've like you know always kind of wanted to die so those thoughts were there from a really really early age like those actions and behaviors are just kind of like you know ligaturing without tying anything and without knowing what it was that I was actually doing anyway um skip ahead like I say to kind of teenage years and this is where my issues with food begin with um (laughs) I started chicken food out of my bedroom window now I've no idea if my grandma ever found out about this but I was always a difficult eater anyway like I say I'm a vegan now and I grew up in kind of like a traditional like white British meals like I don't know your shepherd's pies and like stews and things like that and obviously there was kind of meat involved in everything and I always always struggled with meat anyway like regardless of um having any food issues I always struggled with eating meat because I just I had issues with gristle and the texture and if I had anything wrong with it I just couldn't do it so Uh, there was a lot of things I didn't eat or that I would try and be like no I can't eat that ever again and literally I would I would not eat that one thing again whether it was a brand of sausage or type of burger like you know something like that I just couldn't do it um so there was a lot of things that I couldn't eat from a young age you my grandma tried to do that thing of you know you will sit there until you finish your dinner well no I won't I'll just sit there all night and eventually she'd give up and take it away so it was always kind of a battle to get me to eat properly anyway which 
I guess is really stressful because my youngest is quite picky when it comes to food. I wouldn't say picky, but there's a lot that she doesn't like. And it can kind of get a little bit stressful when you're trying to ensure that your child is eating. So I can see why that would have been stressful on her. So anyway, I got to this point where as a teenager, I guess I, I wouldn't say that I was given like a lot of freedom, but I don't think my grandma was really strict or maybe I was just kind of too pushy. <laughs> um, maybe I was quite difficult to rein in. So I would insist on eating my dinner in my bedroom. Not obviously when I was younger, but teenagers. I'd be like, okay, I'll have my dinner upstairs. I bring my plate down when I'm done. And I used to chuck food out of my bedroom window into my neighbor's garden. <laughs> so I don't even know, like, maybe their dog ate it or the cats or something. Like, nothing was ever said to me. Basically, I was never found out that I did this. Or if I was, like I say, I didn't know about it. Um, but I used to chuck food out of the window and be like, yeah, I've eaten like half my dinner and that would be an acceptable amount to, you know, leave um, the meal time. So this is when my food problem started, I think. Um, now, teenage years are a lot harder for me to remember because things are all over the place. There are a lot of major events in my teenage years and things are just kind of darted there and here and it's difficult to kind of make sense of it so i'm just going to name things that i can remember but not really in a particular order so that was one of the things food um which is difficult because my issues with food aren't full time it literally is something that pops up like an episode i have an episode of my food issues and then i'll be fine so um they're not constant so other times i'll be fine and i'll be eating and stuff but that's where they started which is something that obviously I deal with now. Um, I also, my behaviour changed a lot in school. In primary school, I was always really well behaved and, you know, tried to do things that the teachers told me. And secondary school was quite a shock on how different people were and teachers were. And I immediately just became an absolute shit. <laughs> I didn't care about anything or anyone. And I, like I said, this is when my anger really, really started to come about. So um i started getting into a lot of trouble with teachers um never really like fighting or anything like that it was always against teachers teachers <laughs> it was never against my peers so i would always be getting kicked out of class um i almost got like permanently excluded like my first term at the school like there was i was always in some kind of trouble but i was always one of those people that um you know when you have the naughty kids that just get on with some teachers like I've worked now with people, young people that are little shits, but you just love them <laughs> because it's kind of who they are and how they are. So I always had a good relationship with like a handful of teachers, but most of the time I was just getting in trouble. Uh, I would start isolating myself a lot though. I would isolate myself when things were particularly bad at home or with my emotions. I would isolate myself from my peers. I would be really withdrawn in class um sometimes i would literally just be crying in class literally like in a corner and crying i know that sounds really depressing but literally in a corner and crying um i would walk out of my classes a lot you have to remember as well that there was so much going on at home that i would perhaps be in an argument with my mum like texting whilst i'm in class or and like a situation's going down or something has happened at home and i'm hearing about it like there were so many different things that could be triggering me that it was like I was triggered all the time and when I wasn't triggered I was just so angry at the world I was so angry for existing so I would leave my classes a lot I would be found wandering around the corridors and not like engaging with people <sighs> and I feel like everyone failed me and I know that might sound quite selfish that doesn't sound selfish fuck it i should have been helped my i had teachers um who kind of found me outside of my lessons i'd literally like i said i'd be i don't know in a corridor in an isolated area crying and um get found by somebody and i'd just walk off um, and asking me what's wrong i wouldn't be speaking to anybody i'd just go i had like little bits where i spoke to like um 
like a nurse. There was a nurse there. She wasn't a counsellor. And I used to try and speak to her. Like I would go to her every lunch, like once a week and I'd be speaking to her. Um, and she kind of helped, you know, it was literally just somebody to kind of talk to. And I spoke to her about things going on at home, but I never got any help beyond. I was never referred anywhere. Um, teachers, because they were finding me outside of my class and stuff, were saying that they thought I was anorexic because I was really, really slim. Like when I was eating, I could eat as much as I wanted and would just never gain weight. So I was just one of those people who's really tall and slim. And my eldest is an exact carbon copy of me. She's so tall and slim. Just naturally, I wasn't anorexic, but there was just things said about me. I can't even remember where I heard that from. I think a teacher might have told me, but nobody made a referral and said, she really needs help like somebody should really look at her nobody spoke to my grandma and said we think you need to get her like some professional help like nothing happened and that makes me really angry like i say i'd be getting into trouble i'd be walking out of my class a lot i started um actively self-harming in my teenage years as well i started the way i started that was with these things that we used to call chicken scratches which would literally be um, scratching your skin so literally just like this just a scratch on and on and on and on and on until the skin comes off and it goes all red and horrible which is something that I've continued in adult life except um, not by scratching by using something more effective to cause more damage when I'm doing those things but chicken scratches is how I started off with self-harming because if anybody's ever had a friction burn you know that they burn and they're horrible and they last for ages and the healing is just terrible um and I think it's something that kind of started you know school friends and you've been stupid and you're like oh I dare you to do this and like see who could do the better one and like freeze burns you ever held a deodorant can on your arm and like held it there until it freezes your arm just stupid things messing about but to me, they became techniques. So that started, I started to find sharp objects like your typical razor blade out of a sharpener. <laughs> I started to remove those from sharpeners and store them. I started to, um, I started cutting on a kind of low level, nothing super, like superficial, but I started self-harming behaviors as well um, as a teenager. I used to drink a lot from a young age. I lied, I lied to uh, my parents about where I was, or I would just stay at a friend's house and we'd just go and do it together and nobody really gave a shit. And I put myself in a lot of dangerous situations. I remember that myself and a bunch of friends um, in this park that has a very bad reputation in my local area, literally we can't have been any older than like 14 and it was dark and there was a group of us and we were just drinking 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 and there was older guys with us who i don't know who knew them or how they knew any of us but they would be there drinking with us and i remember just getting drunk with these older guys who definitely shouldn't have been hanging around with 14 15 year olds because there's absolutely questionable behavior adults or like oh sorry as my voice went um and they would be drinking with us and then we got chased by the police because they found out we was in this place or you know um i would be passed out in parks i'd passed out in parks many times because i was drunk like blackout drunk and i'm talking like all before the age of 16. i used to um i jumped in someone's car once who obviously was a lot older than me because he was driving uh, to give me like a ride somewhere who i'd never met before and it was like for a mutual friend but all of these things i'd be drunk with these people i'd be passed out with these people who i didn't know who they were or i'd only just met um and sometimes like i say we're a lot older than us uh i smoked a lot of weed <laughs> um yeah i smoked a lot of uh cannabis when i was a teenager as well um and that's something that i would say that i do now only if i'm like really struggling sometimes but 
uh, it's not really like where I'm at. It's, I'm not saying I've never done it as an adult because I have, but it's not really a cope mechanism of mine anymore, but it's something that I did a lot from a young age. And uh, I, I just put myself in so many dangerous situations that I just didn't care. I, I just did not care at all what happened to me. And yeah, I just, I don't know, I just wasn't bothered. As I got older, um, I went to, like, I would say still young, like 18, 19, you think you're an adult, but you're not. You think you're grown <laughs> and you know everything that the world's about, but you don't. I'm 27 now and I look back at even like 21 and I'm like, oh my God, I was still such a child. And I'm probably going to get to 30 and be like, 25, I was still such a child. <laughs> but I went through a phase of I was just my reactions were so out of control I was so angry and I would be arguing with my grandma at home a lot I would be smashing my room I was just like I say just in so much anger and turmoil I just wanted to burn the whole world down and I know that sounds like typical teenager but I don't know maybe it is but it's so elevated if for any of you that have like worked in mental health um I spent a lot of time working with adolescents with mental health issues and I see the differences of course I do I've spent a lot of time working with young people in general and you can you can see the illnesses um mixed in with their teenage angst you can see it and it's it's sad because, you know, especially when you recognise yourself in it. So I'm trying to think if I've missed anything off. The thing that I distinctly remember was feeling crazy. And I can't put that in a better way because crazy was how everything was. I don't mean that in a derogatory way, like mental health conditions are crazy. I mean, I felt crazy. And it really makes me mad that I wasn't taken to get help. When I was 16, I took myself to the doctor's and I was diagnosed with depression and my then dickhead boyfriend of the time um, convinced me not to go on medication. And when we broke up at 18, I went straight on medication. I've been on medication ever since. But I remember knowing that I wasn't okay. I knew from such a young age that I wasn't okay. And I felt crazy and there was this, this pain in my head and this anger and this thing and all of this stuff that I can't get out, but I have to get out. So I was doing all of these terrible things and even when I was diagnosed, I knew that there was more to it than that. I think I mentioned that in another video about BPD, um, that, that I knew that there was something else wrong, but I wasn't diagnosed with BPD till I was 21. But I felt like I was screaming for help my whole life. And eventually I just had to try and help myself. And anyone who's followed any of my channel on my videos on mental health services and things like that, you all know how that went. So <laughs> ultimately, nobody has helped me <laughs> apart from little bits here and there, but I've, I've kind of just adapted and learned to help myself. So yeah, um, I have probably missed a bunch of things off. Uh, I really don't want to make this too long. It's already half an hour. Oh my God. <laughs> but I... I think that pretty much covers everything that was an obvious sign to me and that I can remember that I, like I say, I just knew that I was not all right. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I don't know why. Maybe because that's kind of what I do on this channel. So I guess that makes sense. <laughs> um, I would be really interested to hear your experiences, like when did you know you wasn't okay? Did somebody point it out for you? Did you always know? Like, how did you know? What did you do? It's very typical for people to be like, especially with borderline personality disorder, oh, you have these problem behaviors and you do these typical things and you do spend money and do drugs and be careless and yeah, okay. Like those things might be true. I have done all of those things, but from a young age, it's not that simple. From a young age, you don't have the control to be being reckless, really. So you're doing it in a way that you can comprehend for the age of your mind, like the things that you're able to do. 
Like, as a five-year-old, I wasn't able to go out partying and doing drugs till I nearly died, was I? No. <laughs> so I did what I could then to express whether that was in a positive or negative way. So, yeah, I'd be really interested to know what your guys' journey was like and just how you realised that you were fucked up. <laughs> yeah, all right, share with me, don't share with me. It's up to you, but that's me sharing with you. I'm gonna stop this before I get to 31 minutes because this is long. Maybe I'll do a part two about why I kind of got like this or how it presented as like early adult years because that was a big thing too. Um, but yeah. All right, if you made it to the end, thanks. That is some commitment, I appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>